Good afternoon, everyone. Dawn White with Penn Live here. And many of you may be planning your late summer or your Labor Day vacations. And you may be wondering, can I bring my pet along with me? And how do they travel safely? And I'm here now at John Rudy Dog Park, Canine Meadows in York County. And for more tips on how to keep your pets safe while you're traveling, we have Donnie Lee Spiegel with AAA Central Pen, and we have Charlie the Beagle here. <laughs> Say hi, Charlie. Charlie is my Beagle, and he's in his safety harness. So, what tips would you have for securing your pets when you're traveling, if you're traveling by car? Well, car, uh, the biggest thing is keep your pet in the back seat. Um, you don't want them in the front where they can be injured by the airbag and don't ever put them in the bed of a pickup truck. That's always very, very dangerous. Um, so in the back seat, it's best to also keep them fastened in a seat belt. So here we have a doll, uh, actual harness on Charlie the Beagle. A harness is better than the collar because they don't slip out as easily as the collar would. And you want to make sure your harnesses are very secure. You see the buckle is clipped tight here. If that clip comes undone, he could easily get out. So you want to make sure this is secure on your dog and you have the seatbelt put through. Other options would be something like this that you would click on the harness, harness and then into the seatbelt. Another good tip when traveling with your dog in the car is to make sure that you have their leash on before you open up the doors. You don't want them taken off. They're somewhere new. They could get disoriented and even try to head back home. So, As you can see, Charlie doesn't mind it. <laughs> He's used to it. Good boy. And then this way, if you somehow, God forbid, get in an accident, then your pet's not going to go flying Correct. through the windshield. Yes, and animals can be very distracting while driving in a vehicle. Um, unfortunately, we see times where the driver is holding pets, so that's a big no-no. I mean, they can easily get, you know, turn the wheel, get the car out of gear, or hit the pedals while you're driving. So, mm -hmm. back seat's the best place to be, and securely fastened in case anything were to happen. Uh, he's as safe as can be right now, aren't you, Mr. Charlie? Yeah, Charlie has uh, a couple fans out there, Mark <laughs> Baronkowski and Lori Harvest. Say hi, Charlie. So, oh, hi, everyone. Hello. He's our model for today. Uh, he's asking that his compensation be food. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. We have lots of treats for him afterwards. And you do see a lot of people driving around, if they have maybe a small or medium dog, in their lap. So if you got in an accident, what could happen to your pet, potentially? Oh, yeah, they could be severely injured, unfortunately. Um, they're like an object in the car. So if the car suddenly stops or changes direction, unfortunately, that animal would go flying, and that direction could be really hurt. So that's why we always recommend to have them secured in the vehicle at all times. <laughs> Good question. And then what about fits? Charlie's gained a little weight, so <laughs> his uh, his harness was was not fitting quite the same. So is it two fingers or is there um, well, anything you recommend? Yeah, as long as it's nice and secure, you don't want them to be able to wiggle out. So we think this is like you know you have the, the two finger width in there, like you mentioned. Um, so there's no getting out of this one. We did have to loosen it up a little bit today, but that's okay. <laughs> We're not judging. <laughs> and Beverly McCauley says hi. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Beverly. So this is just part of one of the tips that you have. So let's go around back and we have some Perfect. props. And we'll get Charlie some water. And uh, Dee, Donnie's mom, who works at a dog kennel, will be bringing Charlie around to get some water. And that's one of the tips to make sure that you're your pet has some water, which we have right here. And these are two different bowls. Correct, we have Charlie's personalized bowl. You always wanna travel with cool water when you're traveling in the summertime. And we also have a collapsible bowl, which is handy for traveling, if he wants that. And whenever you're traveling for long distances, you wanna make sure you have enough food and water for the trip and maybe a little bit more. Some dogs are a little picky about their water. You might wanna bottle water before you go, so it's the normal water that they would normally get. So then a um, collapsible bowl like this here, which is probably easy for, for travel, where can people get something like that? Um, any type of pet stores, um, carry all kinds of things like this, a Walmart or Target, something like that. Some other things that we have here to travel with is um, if you have a smaller animal in a carrying case, you want to make sure they have holes at least on two sides to allow for proper airflow. 
and a rim like this is also a good idea to prevent things from getting smashed up against and blocking those holes. You want to make sure you put a comfortable bedding in there, something absorbent, and something that maybe if they're used to would make them feel better as well. Um, on hot days, you might want to include an ice pack just to help keep them cool. We also have food here. Um, if you don't have a pool tab like these canned foods, you want to make sure you bring a can opener with you. You don't want to be stuck without a can opener. Of course, some dog treats to keep them happy for Mr. Charlie. Charlie really <laughs> likes those, especially. <laughs> and like I said, um, if you're going for an extended amount of time, you want to take extra food in, in case for any reason your trip is extended for any reason. Just to make sure you have the food. Same with medication. Um, if you're only traveling for three days, I would take at least a week worth of medication like this. Um, we have toys here to keep them happy. They're like kids, so you want to make sure you have a couple of different things to keep them happy. And of course, their license, their title work, all of their paperwork for their health in case there's any questions. Um, it's also a good idea to make sure you have a picture of your pet with you in case if you they get lost. Correct, yep. And then with um, the rabies over here, if you travel across state lines, it might be especially important to make sure you have your dog's rabies vaccination, their information. Correct, yeah, when you travel, there may be some requirements depending on where you go, looking for certain types of information, either at a hotel, or if you're flying with them, or if you're going via train, things like that. Certain parks might look for some certain paperwork for your dogs. And then we have back here a bed and a blankets as well, and then, um, so we also soft brought, muzzle. yeah, we brought muzzles along. Your dog may not be an aggressive dog, but if your animal gets hurt, it's a good idea to have one just in case because a hurt animal, unfortunately, would act out of their nature. Um, also, a first aid kit we brought along, but I don't know where it got to you right now. <laughs> but it's a good idea it's to hiding. have a first aid kit in case you need gauze or ointments or a bandage or something like that for your pet. And then what about air travel? If you're going to be traveling by plane with your pets, what are some tips that you have? Um, research. Um, so different airlines have different rules and regulations, uh, but actually some airlines now will allow the pet to travel with you in the cabin, but it's only up to so many animals per trip. So it's first come, first serve, so you want to make sure you plan as far in advance as possible. And something else we were talking about earlier is not sedating your pet if they're going on an airplane. Correct. Which yeah, might be counterintuitive to some people. Well, yeah, some people think that's just what you do, but they try to stay away from that because of the high altitudes, it can affect their breathing, unfortunately. Um, so it's best just to work with your dog and do whatever is best for them. Um, if it's not a long road trip, we suggest take a couple extra days and just do a road trip and just have fun, enjoy the journey. It's more about the journey than the destination, right? And then with car travel, actually, uh, my other dog, Houston, that's his glad pack to not puke in the car. Oh, no. <laughs> so with, with car travel, you think it's okay if you kind of yeah. sedate them or give them anti-anxiety? Well, unfortunately, some dogs, they um, think a car ride means they're going to the VET. They associate <laughs> it with getting a shot afterwards, so they might not be too happy. So that's something that you can work with them on, do short road trips, and then treat them along the way, take them somewhere fun, like the dog park like we're at today, um, so they're not always associating it with the vet. And what about hotels that are pet friendly? How can people find out that information. Yeah, sure. So I'm glad you asked. So AAA, we approve restaurants and hotels from coast to coast. And we actually have more than 13,000 restaurants and hotels that are pet friendly all across the United States. So it might be easier to travel with your pet than you actually think. Um, also, I did want to make mention of our photo contest. So <laughs> Talking about summer. Right, right. Um, so the deadline to enter is September 24th. This, if you go to the website, AAA.com slash pet travel, not only is there a ton of tips, information about where to stay, where to go, um, you can also click on the contest to enter a picture of your pet, and you can see the photos that already entered, and you can vote on your favorite photo. So it's a lot of fun. Check it out. I hope to see Charlie on there soon. Yeah, he's, he's done some summer traveling, and more lounging on the porch kind of well, stuff. Right. But. That works too. I can see him posing for some pictures. Yeah, he's been asking for an agent lately with all uh, this I'm sure, all video this stuff that he's been doing. <laughs> and then any other tips you have or maybe misconceptions people might have with traveling safely with their pets? Uh, just one thing we like to emphasize for all pet owners is that when you're traveling with your pet, just plan in advance. Make sure you take the time to pack everything that's needed. Um, I mean, I think it's so easy for people just to take a trip and leave the pet at home or put them into a kennel. But uh, most of the time, a pet will enjoy a trip just as much as you do, and it could make it even more enjoyable to have them along with you. They're part of the family. 
Yeah, that it's just as good for the family as for the dog to be able to go away on a vacation Definitely. with you. And then you can submit your pictures to the photo <laughs> contest. What are the prizes for that? Um, I think there's monetary prizes, and then a lot of the pictures go into our annual pet book that we put out every year. Yep, and Lori Harvest says, Charlie, you're a star now. What a good boy working with your mama. Oh, he you. wants to make sure that other owners know how to properly put the harness on. It is important. <laughs> Well, thanks very much, Johnny Lee, for joining us and for giving the tips and showing some of the, the props that you brought along. Of course, thank you. So later today, there will be um, a print version of this story on the website, penlive.com. We will break down each and every one of these tips. Also have more information on our website that AAA has about your pets and traveling safely with them, as well as the photo contest. And... One of the tips is water, and Charlie's having a little bit more there. So when you're traveling with your pets, definitely bring their, their bowl and their water. Have a great day, everyone.